Bad news for anybody wanting a stolen car radio or overpriced wood fire pizzas because Norton Street is an absolute ghost yard tonight as every Italian with a shoddy back has come out to see one man, Alessandro Del Piero, arguably the greatest Italian to play in the A-League since Jason Spagnuolo. Is that how you pronounce his name? It's, it's been a while. And what a prestigious way to wrap up your career. Winner of World Cups and Champions League titles, pitted alongside players of such esteem as Jewel Socceroo Cat winner Paul Reed, the perfectly symmetrical head of Trent McClenahan, a pre mulleted Ryan Grant, and the five foot six inch man mountain that is Hadji Gligor. Mm. And look at his face, absolutely stoic, completely focused on the opposition, and definitely not on the fact that he plays for a team that has a big fucking mouse with wings on its jersey. 10 minutes in and check out Craig Goodwin here, rocking those bleach tips, looking like he's about to drop a paternity bombshell on Summer Bay. Goodwin whips it in, and he's found the head of Trent McClenahan, and he's done a great job there. If his job wants to look like an absolute dickhead, he's headed it directly to an opposing player. The end result has silenced the cove much like how they are for any other moment of the 90 minutes. It's been eight years and I still have no idea what Trent was doing there, but one thing's for sure, it was fucking stupid. Let's talk about the Griffiths brothers. I can't remember the non-cock punching ones. All I know is his dad should pull out every once in a while. Anyway, long haired Griffiths has a worse touch than Craig Foster during the national anthem, and it's landed directly in the path of Craig Goodwin. But luckily, he's let Sydney off the hook. Much like how the FFA let Sydney off the hook when they breached the salary cap in 2006. And as you can see from the second replay, Craig Goodwin's hair is still shit. Sydney FC's defenders must be vampires because they are struggling with Goodwin's crosses today. He's found the massive head of Emil Heskey, but has put in an effort more disappointing than that vampire's cross line from a few seconds ago. Really sorry about that guys, been going through some stuff lately. But look at that defending, it's as tantalizing as Paul Vorden's pubic line. Sydney FC have a free kick and by god, I haven't seen an Italian cause so much anxiety for a bunch of skips since Grosso in 2006. And look at that, oh, that is some vanilla cannoli magic. And fuck me, he's castrated Ben Kennedy's spicy meatballs. I haven't seen accuracy like that since Todd Carney pissed in his own mouth. The Newcastle fans will be feeling that in the fallopian tubes because that was an absolute cunt puncher. Look at Del Piero, demanding his teammates stay focused. So it's only natural that Sydney collapsed within seconds and Trent McLenahan having a little sit down. Why not? Oh sorry, that's not Trent, that's Terry McFlynn. Normally when I see defending that fucking stupid, it's because Trent McClenahan is involved. The end result sees Emil Heskey slot home with more reason than some forced metaphor that doesn't land. I'm self-aware, go fuck yourself. An incredible day, goals for both marquees were both wondering where they went so horribly wrong in life to end up in the Hyundai A-League. It's the maestro of magic. Of the vanilla kind, friend of row A to Y, villain to row Z, it's Ruben Anton Zadkovic. Look at those exhales. He's got something special lined up here, but can he handle the pressure of trying to slot it home in front of a crowd of 19 year old fourth generation Australian Italians wearing Chelsea jerseys who won't rock up to another A League game for three years? Answer no because he's a fucking bold bitch. Not to matter though, because the Newcastle fans are about to find out why they call him good win and not bad lose. Fuck, that was awful. Like God, am I an admin for A-Link banter kind of awful? Like Jesus Christ. Goodwin has beaten the offside trap, although calling it an offside trap is like calling the Grand Canyon a really big hole. It's just lazy marking. And the end result is a goal that will age like a fine wine. Unlike those frosted tips, which Jesus Christ, mate. You got a shark tooth necklace underneath there? You sponsored by Billabong, mate? You headed to the John Butler trio gig later? Hey, mate, where's fucking Surf Stitch? And there was nothing that Chessie could do there. Except maybe 
stop the ball, of course. If there were things he could possibly do in that situation, you'd hope stopping the ball would be high on that list. It's the dying embers. Can Sydney pull it out in a fire? Seb Ryle has found Brett Emerton, who's whipped in a ball to someone I'll have to fucking Google because, mate, who the hell are you? And it's in, but quite frankly, I don't give a shit. Fucking hell, Ailey. Stop hyping up somebody you signed eight years ago. Wanna hype about shit we did eight years ago? They, um, they're actually applauding for you. I'm Count Dracula. Oh. Previously on Home and Away. Oh, see, it looks like a normal 